Mr. Peterson needs a urine dip. Can you do one for me, please? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how to do urine dips. Could you show me? Yes, sure. I've got his sample here. Only use urine specimens that were passed up to four hours before. Oh, OK. Before we test the urine, tell me about the appearance of the urine. What does it look like? Well, let me see. It's yellow. Not too dark. It's not very clear. So, straw-coloured and a bit cloudy. When you take the lid off the sample, make a note if the urine is smelly or not. This sample is a little offensive. Hmm, yes, it does smell a bit. Now, check the container of dipsticks. You should check the expiry date to see if you can use the dipsticks. I checked that before. The dipsticks are in date. It's a new bottle. Good. Twist open the lid of the dipsticks and take out a test strip without letting it touch the testing area on the bench. Right. I have one test strip out of the container ready to be used. Put the lid back on so the other test strips don't get wet. Then dip the test strip into the urine so the reagent squares are completely covered. You mean the coloured squares? That's right. Gently tap the strip to get off any excess urine. OK. Now, hold the strip up horizontally so the urine doesn't run into the test squares. Hold the strip against the analysis results on the side of the container. Against the list of things we are testing for, like glucose and ketones? That's right. The container will tell you how long to wait before you can read each result. You can see that some of the results take longer than others. Oh yes, I see. Protein takes longer than glucose, doesn't it? Write down the results in the patient's chart. Make sure that you include specific gravity and pH, too. OK. Thanks. I'll do that.